these days we live in the age of ray tracing one feature of ray tracing maybe it's the defining feature the thing everyone shows off first are fully perspective correct reflections without any artifacts so much so that some of the entirely rendered by ray tracing mods actually add mirrors to games that did not have them before just to show off that we do in fact use ray tracing knowing this it may be surprising that we had detailed perspective correct reflections all the way back in the early days of 3d graphics and games here are a few examples one of the earliest 3d games that had reflections was duke nukem 3d here in the first level we have this bathroom which has a giant mirror and in the mirror we can see the entire room ourselves and it can even help us to spot the enemy in this ammo box another early example is this demo level shown in the title screen of the first unreal game which has these beautiful reflections Fun fact, the reflections are actually only in the title screen, but when you reach this point in the game, there are no reflections. We do see reflections during gameplay in other locations though. And we can also use cheats to take a closer look at the title screen level and see that the reflections do work flawlessly, even with the particles here. Finally, the Deus Ex training level greets us with these marvelous reflections, and we can even redecorate the place a little bit, and that's also correctly shown in the reflections. So, how did they pull it off? One thing that all of these examples have in common is that the reflective surface is always a perfectly flat plane. When we reflect something on such a perfect plane, what we get is essentially a mirrored copy of our level. So if we want to render a reflection like that, how can we do it? Well, we can just take a copy of all our geometry, mirror it, and put it on the other side of an imaginary mirror plane. Then, to sell that fact, we put a semi-transparent plane in between those two copies. Now when we look through that plane, it looks like we look at a reflection of our geometry even though we're actually just looking at another copy of the geometry through a semi-transparent plane. There's one issue with this technique. If we can look past our reflective plane, we can still see our copied geometry and the illusion breaks down. But there's a simple solution to that, and that's what's called the stencil buffer. The stencil buffer is an additional buffer on top of the color buffer that we use to render our image, in which we can mark individual pixels. So we start off by marking all the pixels covered by the reflective surface, and we render the copied geometry only into those marked areas. This way, we do not see the copied geometry except where we have the reflective surface. Now this trick allows us to use this technique even when we can look past the reflective surface. Later games like Half-Life 2 take this tech even further by adding an extra pass that distorts the reflection geometry after it's been rendered. Now this makes for really convincing order. I think this looks really awesome even today. Now, what are the limitations of this technique? The first main limitation is of course that it works only for a completely flat reflective surface, not for anything that's curved like a car. This is also why we call this type of reflection a planar reflection. The second main limitation is performance. For this type of reflection, we have to render everything twice, which adds quite a bit of cost overall. Some games like Oblivion address this by leaving out some of the objects in the reflection and by rendering it at a lower resolution, but this does remain a fairly expensive technique. Now, this technique has stayed relevant for a surprising amount of time. Later we got cube maps as another popular way to implement reflections. They can not only be cheaper, but also support curved surfaces, although they are usually not entirely perspective correct. And then finally, in the last generation of consoles, with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, screen space reflections as a more modern technique suited for similar use cases have largely replaced planar reflections. Nevertheless, it continues to be impressive what these early 3D engineers pulled off with the most primitive 3D hardware, or even without 3D acceleration in most cases. I also love the fact that this technique, despite its simplicity, still looks really, really convincing, even though it's been around in games for more than 25 years. Thanks for watching.